Hi, I'm Sindastra, and today we're going to take a look at the RetroFlag GPI case. Again, with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Now, we did take a look at this in the past in a previous video of mine, and I used RetroPi. And you might remember, if you've seen my previous video, that there was a lot of troubleshooting to get this running. And in the end, I did manage to get it running in my second video, including sound. But the issue was that after rebooting, sound would stop working and then sometimes it would work, sometimes it would not. People asked me how I got sound running. And I thought I'll make a video on that, but after testing it some more, I realized that it's not a stable fix. So I didn't feel comfortable um, giving you a guide on how to make it run and then it wouldn't run properly in the end. However, someone in the comments uh, pointed something out to me. There's a project known as Recall Box which actually provides a finished image for the Pi Zero 2 for the GPI case. Now, I've never used Recall Box before, but I thought I'll give it a try since it's a pre-made image for this device and the Pi Zero 2. Now, a thing to note is that this is a beta image. It's not a stable image. So I don't know how much of it will work, so I guess we'll take a look today to make sure the screen works, the control works and the sound works. Um, I've never used Recall Box before, but I did take a quick look at the documentation and they said you have to use it through the mains, at least for the first time setup. They said do not use the battery to set the device up. So you can see the batteries are there um, to make sure it's running through the mains. Dang it. <laughs> I guess the reason for that is that during the first time setup it has to expand the file system and everything and perhaps the idea is to make sure the batteries don't die during the setup so that the file system doesn't corrupt. So let's try this out. I have no idea what's expecting me here since I never used it before. I'm not sure it even turned on. Seems like the light is on. Ah. Creating secret area, installing stuff. For a moment I got scared. I thought it wouldn't work. So it says installing GPI case. The screen is working, which is a really good sign. To be clear, I did not install anything. I just downloaded the recall box 8.0 beta, flashed it to SD card and just booted it now for the first time. I thought it might be best to do this on camera so that you can see what the first time setup is like. I really hope this isn't going to take too long says installing games. I might have to pause the video for a moment for it to finish the setup. Maybe I'll have to cut it if it's not going to be done soon. But either way I'm going to have to um, cut the video to actually copy some ROMs to this device. Since I've never used it before, I don't know all the details, but according to the documentation, um, Recall Box provides a network share, as you can see, 8.0 beta. Wow. 
well this does sound like sound <laughs> that's a good sign and controls are working too that's really nice um, I'm actually really happy that this is working wait nine games available I guess those must be homebrew wait do I press start or no start opens the settings um, B yes B is A it seems I don't know any of those games, but I would guess that those are homebrews and that they can include those legally. Well, if B is A, I guess A must be B to go back. Yes, indeed. So they actually have some games preloaded to test, which is really nice. They have way too many. <laughs> okay, now let's go back to Game Boy Advance. Where's Game Boy Advance? I'm really enjoying this background music. Here we go. Okay. What should we try? It should be something easy. I mean something that's easy to get into. Let me turn the volume down. I would guess that something like this should be easy to get into. Oh, dang it. A and B are swapped, it seems. <laughs> so. Play normal game. I would guess that this is something like bejeweled. Oh, I think the contrast is really bad. Maybe I can. Nope. Maybe I can tell the camera to focus on here. So, if this is anything like bejeweled, you just have to find matching pairs like for example like this i actually really enjoy these kinds of games i mean i'm not saying i'm good at them i just enjoy them i could play this for hours but i'm not going to do that on camera so at least we know game boy advance works now let's go back to the uh, menu i hope Yep, now it's focused. Yep, the combination is the same as with RetroPie, which is convenient. Okay, let's go back, which is this one here. Start. I, I should connect to the network. Ah, dang it. I keep, I keep confusing these two buttons. Also, I would like to tell this camera to autofocus, but somehow it's not doing that anymore okay network settings make sure to hit B okay status not connected I actually have to manually manually adjust the camera which is a bit inconvenient so enable Wi-Fi connecting to Wi-Fi Scanning Wi-Fi networks. Wi-Fi SSID. Skynet. That seems right. Cool. But how do I how do I enter the password? <laughs> ah this is actually pretty good. For a moment I was scared that I'm not going to be able to. But they really thought of everything. You can just ah, let me focus real quick. You can simply use 
the control sticks. Honestly, Recall Box seems so much better than RetroPie already. I mean, not only is Recall Box up to date and supports the Pi uh, Zero Two. Let me decrease the music. Not only do they support the newest hardware, but they are also more active, it seems. Um, as I'm recording this, RetroPie has released the latest update in 2020, I think over a year ago. So, and yeah, this looks really polished. I can actually just set this up right here. Of course, I'm not going to do this on camera. So let me jump cut real quick. So I'm back and I would like to show you something really quick before I go enter the password. I realized that I can uh, use the left and right uh, cursor, no, button, no, cross thing. I forgot what you call this cross. Anyway, you can use left and right to select any letter. And I noticed, well, how would I enter a dash or an underscore or a number? And if you use up and down, you can actually switch the wheel to special characters, including numbers and lowercase letters. And I think this is pretty amazing. They really thought of everything here. It's a really well polished user interface. So you don't need a keyboard or anything. That's, that's pretty great. Okay, I did connect to Wi-Fi now and copied some games over. Now I would like to show you how fast this thing turns off. You saw how it showed a little splash screen. That's because it actually does a safe shutdown, just like with the safe shutdown script from uh, Retroflag. But Recalbox has modified the shutdown script to make it a lot faster. As you can see, or I mean, as you saw, almost instantly turned off. But it did not just cut off power, it really did a safe shutdown, which is why you saw a splash screen. Now I would like to show you what it looks like when you turn it on. You know how the RetroPie just shows the console and then a splash screen? Well, this is what Recalbox does. I really liked it. So. Of course, it shows a splash screen as well. Interesting. It did show a different intro video this time. Let's try this again. They actually have different videos that play when you turn it on. So let's try one more. I just thought it's a lot nicer than seeing the console. I mean, I like seeing the console, but having a video during boot time is also nice. <laughs> It seems they use a random video each time. Okay, one more. Because the one I mean was really nice. It was a bit long, but it was really nice. Let's try it one more time. And I hope... Ah, there we go. And I hope it will show the other one, which I saw the first time. Nope. Oh well. 
but at least you see what I mean. Instead of the console and then just a splash screen, it actually shows a little video during boot, which is really nice. So sound does work across reboots, which is really nice. And the controls also work, everything just works. And it's really, really well polished, I have to say. So let's try Game Boy Advance. Of course, we want Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Now let's see if we can scrape this thing. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Oh, we can try main menu and then we go to scraper and now scrape now. And let's hope it will find all of them. Ooh. Oh, oh, it's restarting emulation station. For a moment I thought it's shutting down. Okay, let's take a look at Game Boy Advance again. Still nothing. Why? Strange. Let's go back to main menu. Scraper. Screen scraper is the only one. Um, let's say select none. Oh, we have to go through all of this to say select none, it seems. Select none. Now Game Boy Advance. Where's Game Boy Advance? Here's Game Boy Advance. Actually, let's also do Nintendo 64 and PlayStation. Now we hit start. No wait. Select. No wait. A. A. Scrape now. For some. Oh, it says 14 games not found. Okay. That's too bad. I guess we'll have to do without for now. So let's go back to Game Boy Advance and let's try SpongeBob. Let me turn up the volume. It has a really nice animation when it launches. This thing, oops, this thing is really well polished, like seriously. And the bubbles are nicely smooth, thanks to the Pi Zero 2W. Although someone commented that they used the Pi Zero, the first version with RetroPie, and they experienced no lag with this game. So maybe they have some different settings. Maybe they use a different emulator. I do not know. Let's try a new game, normal. I'm ready. But yeah, seems to work out of the box. I did not have to configure anything here. Works pretty well. No lag. Controls work, sound works. This is pretty nice. And there was no hacking around. It just worked out of the box. So, now that we know this works, let's try something else like Nintendo 64. Now, of course, Nintendo 64 is not going to um, work. I mean, it might boot and everything, 
but um, we don't have all the controls needed for Nintendo 64. So let's see, where's Nintendo 64? Oh, here, here's Nintendo 64. Let's do Super Mario 64. It appears your game didn't start at all. Hmm, that's too bad. Legend of Zelda maybe? Nope, that's sad. Now, you might remember I did get Nintendo 64 running with RetroPie. So let's try PlayStation. Here we go, PlayStation. This is the first and only PlayStation 1 game I have ever owned. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. At least one mandatory BIOS is missing. Leap Retro PCSX rearmed. Your game Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone will very likely not run at all until the required BIOS files are put in the expected folder. Do you want to launch the game anyway? Well, let's hope it will work. It might not, it might. It works. No BIOS needed, interesting. Let's do um, English. Seems like this is X, then this, this is probably triangle, and then this is circle and square. So let's start game. No Harry Potter saves on memory card. Would you like to create one? Yes, please. Start new game on empty. Saving data, okay. Now, some of you might not know this, but um, PlayStation 1 did actually not have any analog sticks, at least not originally. Yeah, this is the intro to the Harry Potter game. I don't think there's any way to skip it. So I might just have to skip it on the video. Um, so as I was saying, the PlayStation did originally not have any analog controls. It just had the cross, the four buttons, start, select, and it had L1, uh, L2, R1 and R2. As you can see, we actually have left and right here, but we do don't have the secondary. But I think for this game, the secondary is not needed. So we might, we might actually be able to play this game on here without any controller limitations. Um, I might have to cut this part out. You know, this is something I really hate when you cannot skip a cutscene. But I think it's almost done now. Gryffindor. Let's increase sound. Yeah, I never actually used BIOS for this game. It was never needed. So... Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I am Albus Dumbledore, your elf. No, Hogwarts I can actually skip it now. Yay. Yep, PlayStation works pretty well. No lag or anything. Now... I don't know, remember what L1 and R1 were for, but I think R2 and L2 were just for the camera, so we can actually play this game with the controls we have available here. Nice, nice, nice. We don't want to hear that. But yeah, as you can see, PlayStation works fine. Hey, Harry, remember me? Ron Weasley? That slimy slither. I think it was 
Okay, I think we've seen enough of PlayStation 1. We know it works, that's good enough. Ah, let's just get out of here. So, I really like this. Da -da 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 -da. So, Game Boy Advance didn't... Oh wait, that worked. It was Nintendo 64 that didn't work because reasons. So, finally, let's try Game Boy. Yep, Game Boy. Super Mario Land. I think this, oh, it's black and white instead of green. Wait, let's see. Actually, let me hit start. I actually do prefer, uh, prefer if it looks green, kind of like with the original Game Boy. So let's see if there's a setting for that. Do, 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 do. Hmm, main menu. Um, let's try main menu. Let's go to um, system settings. Nope. There should be some emulator settings here somewhere. Hmm. UI settings, I don't think so. Game settings, oops. Let's go back. Um, overlays, rewind. I don't actually know which setting it is, but I'm not gonna try it around for too long because otherwise this video is gonna become boring. So I think this concludes the video for today. I'm just gonna be playing around like last time. I hope it will autofocus. It's not out of focusing. Let me focus it. Nope, it's not focusing. I wonder. Oh, when I look at it directly, it's a bit blurry. It's not actually. So I don't think it's the camera. It seems like it is indeed slightly blurry. But as you can see, everything works fine. Sound works. Controls work. Nintendo 64 did not boot, but that's not a problem because we don't even have the controls to play Nintendo 64 anyway. So, yeah, I think Recall Box is really well made. It's really polished and I don't think I'm ever going back to RetroPie, I have to say. Um, Recall Box... I don't know, I just like it more, it seems. I mean, for example, the way um, the Wi-Fi setting was um, designed, where you have a nice wheel uh, to enter the password and the Wi-Fi name and everything. I'm not sure I can even set up uh, Wi-Fi on the RetroPie without a keyboard, so... Yeah, I really like Recall Box. So if you are in the position of using the Retroflag GPI case and you have a Raspberry Pi 02W, I would highly recommend you to try the Recall Box 8.0 Beta. Or if you're watching this video, ah, dang it, screw this. <laughs> or if you're, um, you watching this video in the future it might be out of beta so whatever the latest version is but it's important that it's 8.0 or newer because that's the one that supports the pi 02w this thing keeps getting out of focus so yeah thanks for watching and have a nice day and yeah Oh, dang it. <laughs> Don't forget to check out my other videos. But again, it's, it's over now, so 
you can go watch something else. Nothing more here to see.